Hi everyone, this is Druba and Drunta, or Drunta and Druba. It's also known as Wacky Wacky West. It's known as the game that won the Spiel des Jahres 1991. It's designed by Klaus Teuber, who did Catan, which also won Game of the Year in 1995. And it's an award which is highly regarded pretty much in the industry for games which are highly replayable, easy to teach, easy to learn, and relatively quick to play as well. So, um, this is a famous kind of tale. I've chosen to take things out of the bags, and then you hear the rules just in German. And it's basically around trying to populate and you know build up loads of buildings, and then they forgot about roads. That's the, the crux of it. The same thing applies to Wacky Wacky West. What you're looking to do is basically you've been pioneering, and now you just need to connect up these settlements. So I've neatly packed away everything. Things can get chucked away in the box. So you've got various things, tiles which are of two uh, distance, let's call them. Ones which are three, which are these ones, funny enough. And these ones that are one. We don't need all of them out, so I'll just show you an example. You have pawns. I don't know why they have five, but there are five, even though you only really need four, one for each corner. And you're going to have objectives. You're going to typically just have one, unless you're playing a variant, whereby you can have two. And basically, if one of these comes off the map, then you are then going to change that. So I'll show you what these look like in a second. But each person is going to get a set of cards. They're going to be of like number one value, and some could have number two. Uh, then you could have numbers three and four, which leave over here. I don't know what this is all about. I've never worked out why that's their starting card for some reason. And um, here are some extra things that you can do. These are going to be your objectives, which I'll come back on to. So this is for if you're playing three and four players, um, those can go in play in a second. So I'll leave those out, put level three and four back, and move off to the side. So say that we are player one, we are going to be taking our deck of cards and use them in a moment. So decide first player, which I guess is what this card is for. And what you're looking to do is firstly, everyone is gonna have their objective. So their objective is going to be one of these building types. So basically, we really want um, this kind of building, which is like a fireworks house. Um, this one is a school, this is a museum, town hall, and a birth house. I'm not entirely sure what that is. And um, a church, basically, church is a steeple. So everyone is going to get one at random. So nobody else knows this, but I'm trying to protect the church, which is interesting because when I first played this, and um, that's one I had as well before. Everybody gets these evenly distributed. So imagine they've got some, I've got some. Same for these as well. And same for these two. So these actually can just go back in the box. And when we're showing somebody else's turn, we'll just pretend they're our pieces. So you're now going to reveal and see what you have. So I've got some th level three kind of like road looking pieces. I have, so I can sort of almost stack them, I think, like that. I've got some water pieces here. And I've got one piece of, um, let's say, track, some like, you know, muddy track. I've got some level two stuff. Remember, this thing would be hidden. And I've got, let's see what I've got. So I've got another one of those, more of these. So what, I haven't worked out the distribution, but I imagine it's going to be the similar for everybody. So even though I've got no level two water, someone else will have them. And finally, the single ones. So there's a bit more of everything there. So imagine I start. I'm now going to take one of my pieces and go across. Now, I'm trying to make sure that my churches are not covered over. If they are covered over, then I'm not going to score those points. At the end of the game, we reveal what we have, and whatever we still have remaining is what is going to be our final score. And then you can compare. There is a tie break, which I'll come on to. So firstly, I'm going to come out here. And either in this case, I've got to come out by water. So it makes sense to try and get past this and nobody else tries to cover it over. If I happen to do this, someone could come out and so they could go here and they could cover it over, which wouldn't be great. It's only two points, but right now I just want to make sure I don't uh, go nowhere near it. So I go here, but of course people might think, oh, he's trying to avoid it. Maybe he has the church, maybe he doesn't. So it's a bit kind of uh, trying to work out who has what objectives. So I go here, someone else goes. Now, there's a little boat symbol that indicates um, where you must start from. So they come out and they move along here. Now, if they want to continue this, so someone else would go, they would have to take a piece which is also of the, the water type 
and then they can place it out something like that and then it would move along and when it's like this you can go at any sides so normally only one way in so it must be connected completely to the side you can't have it off to the side and then there's three exit points so now somebody else goes and maybe they cover this over so imagine i said somebody else has their own set this time i want to i could go this way then it's close to this i'm going to go this way so firstly um there is an outhouse here a portaloo now if it's something like this basically it's um, a validation test we need to see if we want to allow it to pass so before we can uh, be allowed to place it it kind of goes there we then look at our secret cards here and we have different things we had when yes yeah three a's we wanted to go ahead yes we want it to go ahead but you know not too um over the top and yeah again so basically um you're quite keen for it to go ahead and also you'll come back to that one we have no or never so this is a colloquial german word for, for nine so that is no you could say uh no but more strongly so there's equivalent to the yes and finally definitely no i don't want it to go ahead two more cards we have this card which i don't mind and we have the yine, which basically means yes or no. You can choose what it wants to be, but it's double value. So rather than it being a single point of towards a yes vote or two or three points, it basically doubles it. It's worth six, let's say. It's a very strong card to play. Now, when you play your cards, everyone reveals. And if it's something like this, I might say yes. I kind of want it because I don't want it going over here. Everyone else reveals. If there are more yeses than noes based on their strength values, it goes ahead. In a tie, it'll still go ahead. And then you've lost this card for the rest of the game. Unless you play this card, which means you can keep playing it and keep playing it, keep playing it for the rest of the game. In a tie break, at the end of the game, whoever has the most of these cards basically is the winner based on their kind of strength. Now, when you play out, um, what you could choose to do, moving on to tactics, is of course say, no, I don't want it to go ahead. And people are thinking, oh, why doesn't he want it to go here? Maybe he has got red. Or maybe he's doing a double bluff. Maybe I don't care. And I'm like, well, I don't really want it to go there. But, you know, depending on how many players there is, I'll have enough time to try and circumvent it. This is all open knowledge, so everyone can see what you're placing out. So maybe um, if someone goes here, nobody's got a two-piece, and suddenly I could then come off and go in a different direction. I could go there, but I could also be considering going this way, which of course moves away from this, and, and then it's down to another vote, which could let people burn through their cards. So it's positive and negative. You have to be aware of what's coming up at the end because um, you might have some pieces which really screw you over or means you can't then cover over more pieces or if someone's starting building towards your thing, you haven't got anything left to move away from these higher scoring uh, values which are all in the centre. Uh, something else to be aware of is if you can't go at any time, you've just got to pass and wait until you can go. Sometimes the whole game will go past and then um, if nobody can go, it will end. Additionally, if you end up boxing yourself into a corner, so imagine that we went down here, and someone went here and they don't go through there, they go here. That will mean this pawn is then gone. And it's kind of out of the game. If someone goes up here, they can't go here either. That's another thing to bear in mind. So the thing about strategy, of course, is seeing where everyone goes, where do they choose not to go. And it's been regarded as best as a four or then a, then a three. But personally, as a two, it's been pretty effective. We've been surprised at how much we've enjoyed um, playing this um, as a two, I think it is. It does work, and um, obviously it's very much more tactical. Because if I do something and they're trying to avoid it, you can pretty much work out exactly what they're going for. And speaking about the um, the double, um, you know, the bonuses where you can do something twice, you could have two cards. Basically, you're working towards trying to protecting two colors of buildings, but then as soon as one of these guys comes off. You then have to force yourself to say, right, OK, the card on top is the one I'm just going to be scoring unless it's a tie. And then you go to the next card. The other cards, such as you're trying to um, either cover or prevent level three buildings being completed. Other ones here, such as level four buildings. We've got obviously more buildings over here. And um, yeah, different things you can work towards. So as the game goes, this is a ranking currently of 6.2 on Board Game Geek. And actually, I'm having a lot of fun with this. This is a lot better than um, that rating suggests and very much enjoying it. I think it's a nice fresh game. It's 30 years old and yet um, it plays well. I like the root building effect. 
like the fact he's trying to screw people over. So it's a bit more um, tense. It can be quite a tense game. And it's a quick game as well. It's 20 odd minutes. It's not doesn't take long. And uh, yeah, I'm keen to play it with more players because I'm curious to see how different, um, yeah, different it is trying to even keep track of who's trying to cover what. So when you start losing things like that, it, um, it plays on whether or not you're focusing on somebody who's going to win. You have no idea maybe who's going to win until the end, uh, especially if most of these things are covered over. But it apparently is an advanced variant going for covering over or having two different objectives. So that is something to, to you know, be uh, be mindful of. But even on our second game, we found it was, it was fine playing it like that. So uh, this is Wacky Wacky West. I'm going to use the pronunciation that I can give. And um, no, it's been a very enjoyable game. It's a nice sized board, not too big. And definitely, I think, in that family territory, I think it's very effective. This time I will actually put away these pieces. And uh, if you do like this video, I've got other Game of the Year videos on available. And I might even do a playlist eventually. There's some Game of the Years I'm not planning to record, potentially. Um, so if you have enjoyed this one and you're keen to see some of these like, more rarer out-of-print games, do check it out. It's got Hans and Gluck written on the back. Of course, I could do a different setting and somehow change that around. I've counted out. It's a 10 by 15 grid. And if you do like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, then please consider doing so. It allows you to obviously see um, what videos are obviously coming up first, and you get to, of course, comment on them in YouTube, which would be fantastic to obviously hear what you guys think. And if I've missed anything out, please do let me know. And for now, we're just going to look into the weighing of this game. So here it is. Um, it's the obviously classic old-style box. And it's 804 grams. So if you carry that around, be mindful of that. Obviously, it's a bit bigger than the more standard Kalaxy box. So, uh, Druba and Dunter. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll be bringing you more videos very soon. Take care.